What's going on Port fans? Welcome back to another video on my channel and today we're going to be discussing Ollie Wines. Now a lot of uh, a lot of talk has been around Ollie Wines' season this year. He's been absolutely phenomenal, having a career best season for Port Adelaide, averaging 32 disposals. He's getting over six score involvements, which is sensational for a bloke of his size and his calibre. He's been absolutely brilliant. Um, throughout the midfield and his last few games have been absolutely phenomenal including the one against the Gold Coast Suns just passed by with 43 touches almost equaling the record for Port Adelaide so a big season for Ollie Wines now I'm here to talk about today because a few uh, little discussion points have been um, been risen since uh, his recent form in the last couple of weeks in particular can Ollie Wines win the Brownlow medal Dixon, you've got a sense that he's going to back his strength in. Drew kicked the last goal. Ollie Wines, they've got five, five unanswered goals, Port. Now, I'm actually here to put a case forward for this because a lot of talk has been around, you know, that your Clayton Olivers, your Marcus Bontempelli's, Darcy Parrish is in the mix, there's Tom Libertore around the mark, McRae. Um, you know, there's all these players that are having career best years and absolutely standing out. Uh, Petrarca as well is up there. But Ollie Wines hasn't really been talked about, and even though he's averaging um, a lot more fantasy points than some of these players, he is um, one, obviously, outside of Victoria. He doesn't get as much recognition for his season. But the question has been raised a couple of times, and a lot of Port fans on the weekend, definitely uh, one in particular was the fact that there was a player of the round done by Triple M, and Ollie Wines wasn't even mentioned. I mean, 43 disposals is a very hard um, you know, thing to make. You, know, you can't touch the game, a ball 43 times in a game every single week. It's just not going to happen. You have to work for it. And he's done the hard yards. He's been absolutely phenomenal and actually been damaging with the football, which is great to see. And he's running and carrying the footy. And I could brag about Ollie Wines' football all, all day long. But I'm here to make a case for the Brownlow medal. And some stats will suggest that he's actually a lot closer than uh, a few people outside of the Port Adelaide calibre will think. Now, don't, doing a bit of research, now that's not like me, you know me, Port fans, I don't do a lot of research, I just blabber on about my opinion and somehow it makes sense. But in all seriousness, the AFL Brownlow predictor on their website has a week-to-week -week update on each game for each player and you know every team and how they go. At this current stage, Ollie Wines is sitting inside the top 10, but only on 11 votes. Now, you must be thinking, 11 votes... What, how is that possible? He's been phenomenal in 13 games this year. Well, let me tell you, in the Brownlow predictor, besides the weekend, he did not have one single three-voter. Now, I can I can understand the case. A couple of games, Travis Boak has been phenomenal in those games where Ollie has been sen sensational as well, and they probably will take votes off each other. And looking at the Brownlow predictor, Travis Boak is on 10. So to have one vote ahead of Trav in probably a season where Ollie Wines has been a standout and in career-best Nick... It's hard for me to argue, being a biased boat fan, but in saying everything and putting it all on the table, Ollie Wines has been sensational and should be getting the recognition he deserves above having the, quote, career best year. He should be in the conversation for the Brownlow medal. I mean, I went through all the games, having a look. I compared it to the Brownlow predictor to see where he was getting. So he was getting a vote here, a vote there in games where he was getting 35 touches and... Yeah, some players would have been more damaging. There has been the likes of Carl Amon, Alir Alir, Charlie Dixon, Robbie Gray. They've all been sensational in spots in games. And a couple of games by Collingwood, um, I would say that Robbie Gray gets the three votes because he was just the difference. Um, and then games like Richmond, where Trav Boak was clearly best on. But then Ollie Wines did have a little bit more touches and had a big influence as well. So... It all comes down to obviously what the umpires feel, and all we can predict these things and do all this um, all this talk. But at the end of the day, we don't really know 100% what's going to happen. And I saw Dale Thomas, Daisy from the um, Heath Shaw and Daisy Thomas show that happens on Channel Seven Plus, and he put it out there that Ollie Wines is going to win the Brownlow Medal. That is his prediction. And 14 rounds in, there's still 10 to go. You just you just wonder what Ollie could put together. And I was seeing a few different predictions from people when there was one website uh, having uh, Ollie Wines at 18 votes equal with Clayton Oliver. Now, looking at the AFL Brownlow predictor, the one on the website, I have Clayton Oliver at 21 votes. You have Bont at 20 and Parrish at 18 at this current stage, which for me seems a little um, interesting considering, yes, Melbourne and 
the Bulldogs have been top of the table, but no doubt they can have votes taken off each other with Petrarca being in there. You know, the Dogs have so many players that have been fantastic. Um, McRae's awesome. Um, Libertorio's been phenomenal. Trelaw's been good in games. And you know, players like Bailey Dale might get a little bit more recognition. And, you know, there's been games where some have been better than Bont. And it will just come down to, um, obviously, a little bit more favoritism with the bigger name players. And that happens. And that'll be the same for Port with Trav Boak in there. Uh, Robbie Gray will get some votes. And as I said, those players before. Previous years for Ollie Wines, he's got a total of 71 votes in his career since the, the uh, debut in 2013. So eight years, 71 votes, um, average of nine per year. There was a career best year in there somewhere. We had 15. Um, and you know, just the way he's building this season suggests to me that he can win this Brownlow medal. You know, we thought Trav Boat was a chance last year, and obviously Lockie Neal had a fantastic year. And Travi finishing second um, to him by about eight or so votes just suggests that you know, Port players will get some votes and we've been winning games and the games that we should be winning, we've been doing well and Ollie Wines has been playing well in them. So I'll run through quickly what, I've been, what I thought will happen this year. In round one against North, he'll get a vote. Round two against Essendon, I reckon he'll get two votes. He had a big day that day with 30-plus touches. Round three against the Eagles, he won't get anything. Round four, I think he'll get a vote against Richmond. Round five, he was great against Carlton. Um, he'll get a vote. Round six, he was BOG. He got the um, Peter Badco medal against St. Kilda for Anzac round. And they had it on the website as two votes. I think he'll get the three. Um, round seven, Brisbane, he won't get a vote. Round eight in the showdown, he won't get one. Travi Boat got the, uh, uh, the showdown medal that day. He'll get the three there. Round nine, uh, he'll get a vote uh, against the Dogs. I think he was awesome that night, even though we didn't get across the line. Round 10, won't get a vote against Carlton. That's a Robbie Gray special there. Round 11, he'll get three votes against Fremantle. It was awesome that day. Round 12 was the buy, so no votes for anyone. Round 13, against the Cats, he won't get one. He could get a vote. That's a question mark. I didn't really... I wasn't 100% sure, but there was a lot of goal kickers that night, and obviously Hawkins and Cameron combining for 10 or so each, and Rosie getting a four-goal quarter. Probably get a vote for Port there. And Last week against Gold Coast, we'll get the three votes with uh, 43 touches. So there's evidence to suggest that Ollie Wines can win the Brownlow medal. Whether or not he gets enough votes to do so, that is the question. There's still 10 rounds to go. So the question mark is there, and the um, the topic is definitely worth talking about because you know, obviously we're talking about if Ollie Wines wins this, the first ever Brownlow medalist for Port Adelaide, um, and that will be a sensational individual uh, recognition for him. And we're finally getting to see Ollie Wines' true potential, and I reckon he's exceeding everything at the moment. And it's great to see him have a breakout year like this one. His body's good, he's fit and ready to go, and if there's one difference that's going to be made in the midfield when we're on, it's Ollie Wines. That's me. That's me talking about Ollie Wines. Can he win the Brownlow medal this year? I'm saying yes, but it depends on the team performance as well. So big games, big moments. Ollie Wines can stand up, and then we just got to get the job done, I think, with the four points as well. And it starts with Sydney this week. And then we've got a big run home. So I look forward to seeing what Ollie can bring uh, for the rest of 2021. He's a very important figure for Port Adelaide. So let me know in the comments below what you think, Port fans, about this one. I'm low-key kind of hoping he'd cause an upset on Brownlow night. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content. Coming away across the rest of the season. My name is Anthony, and as always, can't Ollie wants.